So um, we were still working on assessment, and we have our next example of not assessing. And I think sometimes, again, when we don't assess, it's because we think we want to just get them right to the next higher level of care um, and don't feel a need to, to intervene. But at every level, you really should to make sure that you are getting them to the appropriate level of care. So um, we're going to look at, the, this is really all there is to this slide as far as this example. Someone was calling urgent care at this particular organization. You called ahead to urgent care before coming in. And when she called ahead, um, she was given to a nurse to talk to. And she, she told the nurse, what I, what I really need is um, to, to be seen today. Uh, I'm hoping I can get on medication for my depression. So um, right away, I'm thinking, 2 o'clock on a Sunday in the afternoon, you're calling. You must be in a pretty dark place to be reaching out. But you are reaching out. And I think what, uh, I can't speak for the nurse, but what she did was decide, oh, sure, let me, let me get you someone on call, a mental health provider on call that you can speak with about this. Disconnected the call so that she could um, get in touch with the on-call provider to get this person the next level of care. I see this as a really huge missed opportunity for triage. We have no idea how this, how this young lady was doing. Um, was she in a safe situation? Was she stable? Did she want to harm herself? She's reaching out. You know, this is a nurse. You would think a nurse could at least go uh, to some level of assessment with her before just handing her off. And we need to be really careful of that. <clears throat> I think mental health stuff's a little scary, too. When it's not your background, you get a little nervous about mental health stuff. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit, and this is skipping ahead. Um, there's a slide down the road that talks about intervening in crisis calls, but we'll just, it seems like a good segue to review it now. Um, when you get someone who is depressed, you think they could be suicidal, they're anxious, you're afraid they could harm someone else, even if you feel ill-equipped in that situation, there are some things that you can do to intervene. And I liken it to... Um, <clears throat> I don't know how to use everything on a crash cart. I'm not ALS certified. But I know where the crash cart is, and I know I need to bring the crash cart, and I know that I need to start CPR and call for help. I'm not going to step back and go, oh, hold it right there while I go get someone who can help you. We don't do that. And as a nurse, when you have someone who's in crisis, you have to step in and at least provide the minimum level of care until it's safe to bring in the next higher level. <clears throat> So some key questions you would want to ask anyone who you think is in crisis or not safe is where are you now? You always want to, you're going to want to write this down because it's not in your slides. Where are you now? Try to get a location from them. They might be reluctant to tell you initially, and that's okay. You can keep going, but always come back to that. So can you please tell me where you are? Um, and as you build trust, they might be willing to open up. Are you alone? That's important to know if they're alone. Because if they're with somebody else, is that person not safe? Or is it a person who's supportive that you can kind of pull into the equation as you try to help them? Are you safe right now? Make sure they aren't on a bridge about to jump or about to walk into busy traffic or other imminent thing that would require that you do escalate it right away to 911. <clears throat> do they have a plan? You know, we learned that is uh, for suicide intervention, do you have a plan? Because if they do, the risk is greater that they're ready to carry it out. Um, if they don't, then that's a little more reassuring. They're reaching out for help, and we want to help them. And then in addition, do you have any weapons with you in your car, your house, your purse? Even if they don't have a plan, if they have weapons uh, around them, then there's higher risk. And are you willing to come in and talk to someone? If you've gotten to this point and they say yes, they're willing, at that point then it might be safe to go ahead and disconnect the phone until you can get them to the next higher level of care. But if they're not willing and you're still concerned after you've engaged in this process with them, that's when you have to make a decision. Do you need to bring 911 to them on their behalf, which might mean like flagging someone down in the hallway to help you, um, or is it safe to make a kind of a pact with them? Like, will you promise me that you won't do anything in the next 10 minutes and we'll check in again and make sure we've gotten you the next level of care? <clears throat> so that is um, something to consider when working with people who are 
in high crisis and, and suicidal, for example. But don't, don't disconnect that phone when you know that they are depressed. We owe it to them and our license to make sure we know more before we hang up that phone.